Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today we are going to do a reading for Aquarius. This is going to be for uh, this is for December two thousand twenty four. By the way, um, though time is fluid, whenever it reaches you or or you, it comes across you um, your channel. To me, that's divine timing. Um, this is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, some of you are intuitively guided. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, that's your spirit guides because I read through my spirit guides who connect to your spirit guides. So definitely feel free to ask your guides to give you signs of confirmation. Um, you know, I feel like a reading should, like you should feel it. You should feel it. Um, and to me, that's, that's also confirmation. Uh, you may be in love with an Aquarius, whether platonically or romantically. Um, my daughter has an Aquarius moon. She's, she's dated many Aquariuses. So interesting. Um, she's a Scorpio, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so let's go ahead and just get into your reading. This is the last day of the month. We are going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Always. We are going to use the Gilded Trail to clarify or go deeper. Um, you know, it's interesting. I did Taurus's reading yesterday and it was two hours long. Um, and I don't put a limit on my readings. You know, they are whatever they need to be because I like to give you a roadmap. You know, that's, that's how I read. Like I want to break it down for you. Not only show you the beautiful things that may be in your future, how do I get there? How do I get there? What do I need to do? What's what am you know, what blocks do I have? Um, where is someone else at? That type that type of information. And that takes time. So I thank you for allowing me the time to do that. Um, we are gonna use the romance angels if love comes up. But hello, Aquarius. Love always comes up in your reading. We are also gonna use the master or yeah, the, ma the, the major arcanas, um, really for bullet points, but I have to tell you, I, I usually shoot for like three or four cards, um, you know, because they're just a level of your reading. They're just a part of your reading. Um, but lately I've been getting a lot. So I usually don't refuse whatever wants to come out unless it's human error and, you know, half my deck comes out. Then I may... I may say nay. Um, for your main spread, we are going to use the Universal Tarot. Uh, it's a deck I really love, and I and I really recommend it. It's it's um it's uplifting. So we will use that for your main spread. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down. Not too much. A little too much. And um, let's go ahead and get into your reading. You've been waiting long enough. I know that. All right, so we're going to start with Mother Mary. And for anybody who's new, I want to let you know that I do shuffle your cards uh, for quite a bit before I do a reading. This is just where I'm just kind of meditating, calming my own self down, opening myself up to our spirit guides. Um, so, but I also like to give them a shuffle with you here. All right, if you're ready, I'm ready. Our guides are ready. All right, Mother Mary. Whispering words of wisdom, let it be. Aquarius, open your heart. Open your heart. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. Open your heart. Um, you know, you may not be looking for love. And it doesn't even have to talk about, right? I mean, it's all forms of love. But I do have to say that, you know, romantic love, I feel like there are different levels to it. You know what I mean? Like, there's karmic love. There's free will love. Um, there's soulmate love. There's twin flame love. You know what I mean? There are different levels. But... This is getting you ready for something. So Mother Mary is asking you to open your heart. 
Just allow yourself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. All right, let's bring in the um, major arcanas. Let's give them um, a shuffle. One more. I just saw your major arcana. So we'll see if it comes out. All right. Give me plenty of room. Now let's begin. Make sure I have them in the upright. I do. Um, I make sure all my decks are in the upright when I begin. You know, everybody does it differently. It's just how I do it at this table. And then if something comes in reverse, especially if it's face up, then I know it's meant to be in reverse. Um, if it comes in reverse face down, I just allow myself to feel, you know, whether it was meant to be that way. Whoa. Okay. A lot of cards again. Hmm. Okay. But. I have to say, I have to take them. They're all face up. So let's start with this. We have the Emperor, card of Aries. This can be the father figure. Um, you know, since I read through my spirit guides, I want to let you know, some of you, this can talk about, um, you know, if like your father has crossed over or father figure, it's certainly you know, be part of who's, you know, he's looking right over at Mother Mary's message. So could be certainly a father figure just asking you to open your heart again. Interesting, I just said again, we have the Empress. Interesting. We have the Emperor and the Empress side by side. I have to say, you don't see that very often. It's the mother and the father. It's the mother and the father figure. Um, the Empress, though, let's talk about her because she's very creative. This is someone who, she really does live in the present moment. Um, this is someone who has learned from her past. Both of them actually have learned from their past experiences. And, you know, I feel like it's what really brings out their spirituality. It's like trusting within divine um, even though they're the mother and father figure, they're different, but they both arrive at the same place, but in a different way. The emperor is very methodical, um, puts plans in place, you know, kind of reminds me of an earth sign, though he is fire. Um, leader of the people. The empress is very creative. Um, she definitely feels like she's got a bounty on her lap. So I'm hoping that's what it means for you also. She is someone who, you know, when she receives epiphanies, she puts them to use. Um, we all receive, you know, signs, epiphanies, ideas, but she's someone who definitely puts them into use. But she also trusts in divine timing. Because um, if you think about the Empress, like, you know, carrying a baby f for nine months, right? That's what we want. We want to carry the baby to full term. So it doesn't always mean like I have an idea and I immediately bring it to the table. Um, but maybe it's something that I start working on. I also have to say, if this is relating to love in any way, this is my power couple. This is my power couple. All right. We have high priestess. That's your intuition, your higher self. Hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. Um, so this is a card of Gemini. The meaning of the lovers is a head over heart decision. And that could certainly be the case. It's interesting. I have a feeling there might be someone like wondering, like, is it the right time to get pregnant? Um, or you may find that it happens. Um, but. I often feel in the lover's energy, it also represents chemistry, like real chemistry. I feel like with the lovers and the empress here, wow. Or not just the empress, the emperor and the empress, my power couple. And now the lovers. 
We have the hangman. Hang on, you move too fast. So the hangman is a pause in the action. Um, but listen, you know what I feel often is at least my guides, this is this is how my guides represented to me. Our souls didn't come into this earth just to find love. It is part of it. Um, you know, and I feel like, especially with the emperor and the empress, this can talk about, you know, maybe I've been with a few people, you know, have had a few relationships. They probably ended. Um, but ultimately, it feels like you end up with your person, like, your person. I feel like there is nothing the emperor and the empress cannot get through. And they're both leaders. You know what I mean? And it doesn't even have to mean it's what I do for a living. It's just a natural energy within them. It's like they want to help those who maybe are going through similar situations that they themselves have overcome. All right. Hello, magician. The manifester. Interesting because the hangman is swaying right towards the magician. The magician's looking right back over at the hangman. It's almost like asking, is this is this the perfect time? Is this divine? Like, when is the time for me to move? Can I manifest maybe the perfect partner? Maybe who's ever the other person in the lover's card. Um, I love the two of them together because especially because the hangman is swaying towards a magician and a magician's looking right back over. So, you know, your ability to manifest, you know, the magician, it's almost like I wish the fool was out because um, the fool or the magician is the fool's first mentor on a new journey. And the magician's job is to remind the fool that you really all you really do possess everything that you need to manifest. You know, um maybe you just gotta believe it. This could certainly talk about also divine timing. You know, the hangman's like, is it time? Is it time yet? Then we have the moon. The moon is card of Cancer, roller of, I'm sorry, card of Pisces. Pisces major arcana, let's put it that way. And the roller of Cancer. And then, well, last but not least, I should have looked down. We have Temperance. This is about divine timing. And look what she's doing. She's mixing the loving waters of soulmates. I often feel like temperance is the one who, um, well, she is about divine timing, you know, in the right time. That's probably why the hangman is here. But also knowing that you have the ability to manifest. Some of you, I feel like if, if like, let's say you're looking for love and not just any love, the perfect love. And I don't mean the person is perfect because none of us are perfect. Um, but your person, let's just say, or the one that hopefully you spend the rest of your life with as it relates to love. But this isn't just about love because the emperor and the empress, man, they know that they can manifest like they know that. And they certainly trust in divine timing. Like the Empress, again, you know, let's just say again, carrying a baby, like, I don't know what I wanted to say with that. Anyway, um, by the way, this is also a card of Sagittarius, I should say that. Temperance is mirroring the Emperor. Hmm. I have to say, if this is talking about love... And by the way, the lovers, once I put this card down, will be right in the middle. i to slide them over one more time. Um, 
This is really beautiful energy for that. So, but you do need to trust in divine timing. That's kind of what the hangman's doing. You know, is this the right time? Remember, the hangman is seeking spiritual wisdom that he can use, he or she can use on this physical plane. I'm going to break it down just a little bit more so you can see all the cards. It's interesting how many cards have been coming out for the last couple readings. But, you know, they all came face up, so they're all meant to be here. Um, by the way, the moon, you know, it can talk about uncertainties, but I don't feel that. Because it is surrounded by the magician and then temperance on the other side. Um, so to me, it feels more like dreamy type energy. Some of you might be dreaming about someone. Some of you may be waiting on someone. Um, but I don't mean that in a way of like um, where someone's playing a game. Someone could be connected to another and... You know, I, I get the feeling if that's the case, then you already know who this person is. Um, and, you know, I don't feel like the emperor or the empress is someone who's going to wait around or play mind games when it comes to love. But that doesn't mean that, you know. And by the way, Mother Mary is saying, open your heart. Well, and then temperance, divine timing. And the lover is right in the middle. Um, really, it's the lovers and the hangman um, that's in the middle. And the hangman swaying towards the magician. All right, let's bring in the universal tarot. And let's go deeper. One more shuffle. Um, and many of you know this, but I don't really read the major arcanas as like signs. They certainly can be. Um, I read them more as just their energy. You know, what did they bring? What energy are they bringing to the table? All right, let's give them a cut. And let's begin. Let's see what this divine timing is all about. Look at your very first card. The Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups. Love. Unconditional love. You know, I feel like for some of you, um, it just feels to me like this is not the first time that the Emperor and the Empress have loved and I mean that like in lifetimes. Because this really does represent unconditional love. And the last card that came out, Temperance, where she literally is mixing the loving waters between the soulmates. You know, Temperance makes sure makes sure that both of the cups for the soulmates are equally filled. Well, that feels like, first of all, here is divine timing. And then look at this, we get the Empress again, the mother figure. You know, it's interesting how I said that I feel like some of you may have a father or a father figure who is just part of your spiritual team. I also feel that with a mother, a mother figure, because I do feel like grandma, big sis. But look at that, the Empress is about to fall in love. Oh my, Aquarius, the Knight of Pentacles. So at my table, I feel like the Knight of Pentacles is, I don't know why I always say I feel. This is how I've been guided. That This is our guardian angel. The Knight of Pentacles, um, you know, interesting with the hangman here because the Knight of Pentacles would tell you, first of all, patience. But when the Knight comes in, it's the right time. And there's no doubt about it. 
And that's what the night would tell you. I come in the right time, not before, not after. This Knight of Pentacles is bringing in a pentacle. Um, and this, and what that means to me is that something is coming into your physical life. It truly is meant to enhance your life. You know, this Knight of Pentacles, that's what it's about. How can I enhance your life? And I don't feel like it's a one-time thing. Um, and, you know, I guess the more I trust within my spiritual team, the more I recognize um, the gifts that are already being sent to me. But, wow. Right into the High Priestess. You know, some of you may feel energy coming towards you. Some, like you may say, like, I just feel like something good's going to happen. You know how sometimes we feel like, ah, I feel like there's doom in the air. Well, this feels the opposite. This feels like something good is about to happen. I may not know exactly what it is, but I just feel it. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Um, but doesn't have to be. But look what she's holding in her hand. The pentacle. That the knight. Promised to bring in. So. She's received this pentacle. And she's coming under the lovers. Some of you. It could certainly be an earth sign. Um, you know. I call the queen of pentacles. My psychic detective. It could certainly even, you know, on top of, I do feel like this is love, but I feel like on top of that or including, um, I also feel like this is about maybe your money being increased, you know, like the Empress, very creative, receives epiphanies, doesn't, you know, she, she doesn't even question them. She just knows, by the way, 33, mass number 33, I see that all the time. Um, but anyways, I love that the queen is literally holding the pentacle that the knight promised to bring in and is coming under the levers. I feel like this is also a good time to put any of your ideas, you know, things that you've wanted to do. This may be the perfect time. Again, the knight of pentacles will give you the way show you the way but remember this is about something coming into your physical world and hello we opened with the ace of cups hmm we have the five of pentacles under the hangman interesting I'm saying interesting because i felt early and i know this is not going to be for everyone but it's going to be for someone where there could be someone who is you know, I want to say potentially in a relationship, but when I say that, I don't feel like there's love. I don't feel like it's what I want to be in any longer. Um, and it's not that someone's even being selfish. I don't feel that. It's just, I feel like, you know, where, where whoever I was with, the love is gone. You know, the love has died. And that happens. Five of Pentacles sometimes can feel like a tower moment. But because it's coming under the hangman, I feel like it's more about whether I kind of feel it's the emperor potentially giving the tower to another. Or when I say the tower, I just mean ending something. Some type of change has happened because that's what the five stands for, a change. And, you know, because Mother Mary is asking you to open your heart. I could see, you know, if I've, let's just say, had it rough in love or, you know, had a hard time trusting others. Um, I feel like this is maybe what some of you are overcoming. But it does speak about a change. But I'm not worried about this change. 
because we start with the Ace of Cups and we have the Knight of Pentacles and this Queen is literally holding the Pentacle in her hand. You know, sometimes when you break off a relationship, even if there is really no love left, it still can hurt. And I feel like whether it's the Empress or the Empress, you know, potentially ending a relationship or ending, yeah, let's just say a relationship, um, you know, they don't feel good about that. And they probably thought long and hard about that. Now, when I say they don't feel good about that, it's not. It's just, it's hard to hurt someone else, you know? Um, I feel like they're finding, like the Empress and the Emperor are finding love. But that means that someone, in a way, is going to pay the price. Um, but again, I feel like whoever that is, whoever the other person is, they themselves would have to recognize that there's really not much left to this relate, you know, it feels like an empty relationship. But change is hard for most people, you know. Unless you have a life path five, if you have a life path five, um, then you got to get used to change because that's part of what that life path is about. You know, a lot of adventures in your life and allowing them to happen. And yeah. Sometimes that means we got to end certain things so that new things can begin. I often feel also in the Five of Pentacles, even though it can be temporarily difficult energy, I feel that I'm moving towards my soul tribe, maybe a soul mate, but also a soul tribe. Come on. Hello, lovers. And then look at this the world this is the next chapter this is very spiritual energy this is when you're walking hand in hand with your spirituality you know you're trusting in divine timing it's funny it brings up a comment someone wrote i'm sick of divine timing i get it right i get it but yet in the same time divine timing is really on your side How do I love that the Ace of Cups is mirroring the world? Literally, the next chapter. And I feel like this next chapter really couldn't have opened without the Five of Pentacles. So even though temporarily it's difficult energy, and it's interesting how I said it's moving you towards your soul tribe, and then out comes the lovers again. And that makes perfect sense to me. And the magician right above it, the manifester, knowing I can manifest it. How can I manifest it? Well, Mother Mary's giving you a clue. You do have to have an open heart. You know, that's the one thing the Empress really, well, there's many things she's learned. But one of the major things she's learned is to stay loving and nurturing. You know, but she's very powerful at the same time. And why is she powerful? Both of them, really. Because they've been through it. They've been through it. They've had these tower moments. But they've learned from it. It doesn't mean they've learned it immediately. But they definitely have learned from it. You know, the high priestess next to this my power couple, I'm just going to say, um, it's your intuition. And that's, that's why I keep feeling like, ah, Something good's going to happen. Something good's going to happen. But first, there's got to be a change. Okay. I feel like I'm willing. I'm willing to make this change. You know, um, whatever it may be, I'm willing to make this change. And some may be asking, like, you know, when's, like, let's say you already know, like, what type of change that it's asking for. Well, that's what the hangman is like. When is the right time? I felt like the magician would say now. It's a one. Now. Now, of course, that is your free will choice. But look at the beauty 
that's already on the table. All right, let's keep going. Also, the synchronicities. The Empress twice. The Lovers twice. It almost feels like the Emperor is coming in for the Empress. Like the, em the Empress doesn't even realize um, that this love, well, mm, again, I feel like I feel it, but I may not be able to put a name to it yet. The hangman could be asking the magician, like, is this the right time for me to fall in love? Am I ready? The moon could certainly talk about something happening around moon cycles. Maybe during a full moon, this is when I'm making this change. I feel like a full moon is the uh, the perfect time or a new moon, you know, to, and I feel like this is something we should do more often than we usually do. And that's just like taking a look at your life, like what's working, what's not working. What can I do better? How can I manifest this? How can I feel, you know, first of all, I feel like there's a lot of abundance in this reading. So I don't want to make it just a love reading because I feel like the abundance is off the charts. You know, I also love the Ace of Cups next to the Empress because she's the one, like we all receive epiphanies, but she's definitely the one who puts them into action. So we could certainly talk about also because I definitely feel love, but it could also be doing something that truly brings me joy. Temperance again, right under the Ace of Cups. Divine timing as it work is it is at work in your love life. It just is. <laughs> it just is. You know what else that makes me feel? I don't have to worry about this. This is not something that I have to be out like. I don't have to seek it. It's going to seek me. It's going to seek me. It's going to find me. It's going to come into my physical world. And chances are it's going to change your physical world. But in, in the most loving of ways. You know, if you look at temperance. Look at temperance. And then look at the lovers. They're being influenced by temperance. Temperance has a couple different me messages. First message is about patience. Like, give me the time to make sure both soulmates, both cups are equally filled. That means that both are ready. And that's what the patience of it is about. But because you have energy that really feels like it's moving um, now. I don't feel like you have to wait long. Of course, that's, a, that's what you're seeking. And when I say seeking it, again, it's temperance says, let go of control. Trust in divine. Trust that what's in store will definitely be worth the wait. Um, double Sagittarius on the board. Double Gemini on the board. High Priestess again. Right under the Empress. Nine of Pentacles. Right under the Knight of Pentacles. That's why I was feeling um, 
that this is more than just love. Even though it does feel like great love. I have, I have to be honest. It feels like great love. But also, now the Nine of Pentacles under the Knight of Pentacles, who promises to bring in this Knight or this this Pentacle at the right time. And again, I feel like the Pentacle that this Knight brings in, it, it is meant to change your life. It is meant to enhance your life. Um, and now that it's coming under, or I'm sorry, above the Nine of Pentacles, which the meaning of that is successful self-employment. Um, you know, and I definitely feel that with the Empress's energy. I feel the majority of you here are probably the Empress, male or female, by the way. Um, man, Aquarius, this feels like, this feels like you're moving into one of those periods of your life where it's like a pinnacle. You know, like, like you're going to mark this time as when greatness found you now it's not because uh, mm, how do i say this like you know it's not how do i say this it's because you deserve it understand that because in the nine of pentacles it's you focusing on you know whatever it is you do in the world and it doesn't have to be self-employment it could just mean that your money's going to increase. Um, but I do love that the Empress is also right there. Because, again, she's very creative. Also, you take that pentacle that the Knight's carrying, you add it to the Nine of Pentacles, well, that makes the Ten of Pentacles. And in the Ten of Pentacles, you're not alone. You know, it feels like two people who are doing something that they just know is right for them. It feels like two people who may take different, different paths, but arrive at the same place in divine timing. I could see the emperor and the empress doing like the same type of work. Could be, um, with the high priestess right next to the nine of pentacles. Yes, it talks about a couple different things, I feel. First of all, I feel like the empress is just feeling, you know, I just have this feeling that something really good is going to happen. I just feel it, but she's ready for it. And she is someone who, you know, she, like the fool, she, she has learned from her experiences. And... I feel like both the Emperor and the Empress probably did not have an easy life. Um, that might be why I'm seeing, you know, 33. For some of you, it could be a master, like your life path could be a master number, 33. And if you have a master number, well, then you are here to really learn. You know what I mean? I often feel like, and I don't want to get stuck on the number because I know, you know, not all of you are going to have a master number. Um, but it can talk about you, but you still carry that energy. And if you think about a master number 33, you want to also um, add those numbers together. So three and three would be six. That's usually where the lesson is at for a master number. Like if you have a master number 11, one and one, two. You know, if you're 22, two and two, four. So you definitely want to look at both energies. Um, but six really is about relationships. So I feel like this is talking about um, not just like love coming in, but that it does turn into a relationship probably more. Like a relationship that I feel like can probably last the rest of your life. And I say probably because you do have free will. But with the emperor and the emperor showing up, I feel like both of them understand. You know, it's like we we both understand love. And, you know, I just feel like they're meant to be together. But again, they're different. But they really can fulfill each other at the same time. You know, they're both compassionate. They both care about their fellow man. And what can I do to help? 
How can I help my fellow man? That's always a winning combination. Okay. Three of cups. First of all, joy. Feeling joy. I mean, really joyous. This is a reason to celebrate. Coming under the lovers. Or mirroring the lovers. Coming under the Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles is, is holding what the Knight of Pentacles is bringing in. Some of you, I feel like not only might you be celebrating love, but I also feel like you're celebrating um, either like a promotion, a new job, your own business, you know, like seeing the fruits of your labor. Again, the Empress looks very bountiful. But that bounty comes from her work, what she, you know, what she does in the world. And it's interesting that she does have the high priestess below her and she's next to the high priestess. So this is definitely someone who pays attention to her intuition and doesn't second guess it. You know, the one thing about the Queen of Pentacles is she can be an overthinker. You know, like, ah, uh, I can overthink something. And I feel like this is calling for you to listen to that first instinct and not to overthink it because it's meant to bring you joy. But boy, do I feel like you deserve it. And I feel like that's what your spirit guides are also saying. You deserve it. Like you've been putting in the effort and now it's time to see, again, the fruits of your labor. And I feel like in your money, but also in love. Like a car just flipped around. It is. Look at that. Somewhere, somehow, the Eight of Cups flipped itself around. Which, I have to say, makes perfect sense. Coming under the Five of Pentacles, where there is a change. And Eights are about a new beginning. This is someone who's walking away from an emotional situation, but with clarity. You know, maybe... I don't need to know why every cup was knocked over. Some of them could have just been free will. This person's heading towards the nine of cups, which is inner harmony. That's beautiful. It's like the hangman is asking, when is the perfect time? And I feel like the magician is saying, when you understand your emotional house, when you're willing and able to release the past. Right under the Five of Pentacles, where there is a change, and then the hangman asking, is this the right time? I feel like the answer is yes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Some of you could certainly be in a twin flame relationship. Oh, you. Yeah. All right, another eight. Eight of Swords. This is a self-created prison. You know, this stems from fear. I don't want to repeat, you know, like the cups that have been knocked over. I don't want to repeat that. This is about Instead of trusting one's intuition, this is putting blocks up 
You know, it's interesting how I said in the beginning of the reading, like when we do a reading, we're really looking at all areas of your life. And the blocks, well, this is the only block that I see. Now, whoever created this prison is the only one who can free themselves from it. Sometimes you just got to take a chance. And again, it almost doesn't fit because I feel like I, I, I mm, well, it may be who's ever in the hangman's energy. Interesting, we have two eights, 88. Some of you may have been born in 88 or someone you're interested in. Um, but eights do stand for new beginnings. It's also the number of infinity as above, so below. That makes sense with the beauty that's on the board, the lovers, temperance over and over, the ace of cups, your guardian angel, um, the magician telling you. And by the way, the eight of swords is mirroring the magician. It's like the magician is saying, free yourself. Free yourself and the rest will fall. Okay. You know, that's real life. You know, for some of you, maybe, especially with Mother Mary saying, open your heart. It may just be saying that, you know, you have, you have, um, I want to say goodness coming your direction. And I don't feel like the Eight of Swords would stop it. But it could be you like being afraid to step into it. It could feel overwhelming. It could. And, but I mean it in the best of ways. Like, holy shit. All right, well, let's see what follows it. The magician again. Under the world. And by the way, look what's above his head. The number eight, which is represent, representing infinity here. He's pointing up to like the heavens. Divine. And trusting in divine. The magician is mirroring temperance. Who is about divine timing. Coming into the world. Oh, the Ace of Pentacles. Literally what the Knight of Pentacles says I'm bringing in. The Ten of Cups. Come on. it. I was going to say Aries. Come on, Aquarius. To say Ace of Pentacles is telling you again because remember when you see the ace of pentacles it means it's coming into your physical world a lot of times you'll see this ace that has it'll have roots attached to it and to me that means it's something that can truly take root that can last forever and ever and ever and then interesting we get the six of cups with that so some of you may already know who this person is Again, some of you may be, you know, I, I don't want to say waiting for someone to leave a partner. But that might just be part of it. But again, it's not like, I don't, I feel like no way am I like just waiting and waiting and waiting. Because the Empress would not do that. You know, you either love me or you don't love me. You either want to be with me or you don't with, want to be with me. Right? She doesn't play mind games. Love me or don't love me. But real life can be like, you know, um, maybe the Six of Cups, which, you know, the Six of Cups speaks about someone, if it's someone of your past, this is someone I would have very happy memories of. You know, this can talk about someone that you were previously with, but maybe that wasn't divine timing. It doesn't mean you weren't meant to meet. Maybe it really opened up your heart chakra. 
But then I feel like I do feel like the emperor and the empress went on and lived their life and each created it feels like abundance or has the ability to create abundance for themselves. I feel like both of them come to the table um, strong, you know. I don't feel like either one wants to play mind games. And for some of you, it can just be, I'm not, well, I'm saying can just be, but it can be um, that somehow this person is reintroduced in your life. And you may be in a current relationship. And, you know, to be together, I do feel like you would have to leave it. But I don't know why I feel like it's more the emperor. This is someone, when I think about them, they definitely put a smile on my face. Now, because of the energy that's on the board, it doesn't even have to mean in this lifetime. But. It definitely, to me, feels like soulmate energy that if it if we haven't loved in this lifetime, then we planned on loving, you know, as we reached this pinnacle, this is the perfect time. You have the most beautiful energy on the board. Yes, you have a, very, a couple difficult cards, but not many. We'll put them over here. So the Ace of Pentacles, remember, that means it's coming into your physical world. What does it have the potential of creating? The Ten of Cups. That is the house of love. That is the house of harmony. That makes sense with the Emperor and the Empress. Again, they arrive at the same destination, but in different ways. Um, and maybe that's exactly how it was meant to be. Each one of them... I feel like had their job to do in this world, you know, like on a soul level. And many times we don't even remember this, but I do feel like we're able to plant certain seeds of intention before we even come into this lifetime. And I feel like it, because the emperor and the empress are together, it is about learning, right? It's about expanding oneself, one soul but each in their own separate journey that ultimately come to the same place, I feel like, at the same time. I mean, hello, love. And hello, abundance. Like, I don't want to leave either one off the table because I feel like it's talking about both. It's interesting that the Eight of Swords is here because it's, it doesn't feel like it fits. But because it's mirroring the Magician, and it's got the Magician right beside it, I feel like this is definitely energy we could change at the same time. You know, that Magician could certainly be talking to the person in the Eight of Swords saying, My dear... You truly do. You possess everything you need to be successful. Put down these walls. Open up your heart. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to take make a commitment right away. But maybe just step into it. And then I feel like once I step into it, then uh, I don't know how you don't know. Um, because the lovers to me is also chemistry. But chemistry that feels like it's off the chart. Even if you look at this lovers, you can see Cupid. Like Cupid's about to strike. He's about to strike his or um what was I gonna say? Like he's he's about to introduce these lovers. We have the Five of Wands on the bottom of the deck. That's probably where the Eight of Swords is coming from. So, by the way, I love that this is on the bottom. Because to me, the bottom of the deck is really what wants to leave. It's like, okay, what's ready to be eclipsed out of my life? What do I need to know that's no longer working? 
This is a lot of drama. Can be a lot of fighting. I have a feeling it's more the Emperor. Um, and I don't know why. I just feel that. And I feel like it's talking about a relationship. You know, if you find yourself in the energy of the Five of Wands, where there is a lot of fighting, there can be a lot of ego in that energy. I feel like there's only, and it's the Five, so it is asking for change. Sometimes I feel like the only thing I can do in that energy is leave it. I don't want to get pulled into it. Because then it just turns into fights. I don't even feel like I need to seek an apology. I just need to go. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. All right, let's bring in the field of Chirrell. And let's go deeper. Deeper if we dare. All right, let's give him a cut. Um, by the way, I have my healing beads on. Um, I did a promo where this is from Otter Spirit. Um, where they really are running one hell of a special. And then this is my Virgo. I, I don't know where my other one, I should have put all three on. Um, this is my Virgo pack. Um, just for anybody who's wondering. I feel like someone was asking that question. All right. It's under that five. The Knight of Swords. Hmm. Somebody could communicate. And that makes me realize the difference of what I'm in and really where I want to be. I don't want you to forget about this up here, though. This Ace of Pentacles coming into your physical world. What can it produce? It can produce the Ten of Cups. With who? With someone who you know, will make you very happy. Let's at least put it that way. Um, if you have not loved or or if you don't know who this person is, it could certainly, it, then it, to me, it's a, definitely a soulmate energy, if not a twin flame. Um, that will, I really don't want you to worry about that. Love is love. There are different levels to love, um, but love is love. Uh, but this this feels very happy. I love the Six of Cups next to the Ten of Cups. I mean, that's a lot of happiness. Maybe after a period of time of not being so happy. Make sure they're in the upright. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start at the beginning. But we are reading it as a whole. There's the Queen of Pentacles again. Age of Pentacles, wow. Could be the younger energy of this queen. And, you know, I don't, like when we see the queen or the king, um, to me it doesn't have to mean a female because we do carry both feminine and masculine energy. Um, so I want you to understand that. But I also find it interesting that the Page of Pentacles is coming over both of the empresses. And to me, the Page of Pentacles means that I've been on a learning, like like my life has been about learning. You know, it's a learning experience. Uh, some of you could, this could talk about someone you went to school with, college, high school, grade school. You know, they're pretty young in the Six of Cups. But now I'm feeling more and more that 
the majority of you know who this person is because I do feel the page as younger energy and the queen as current energy. But the empress to me understands that there are certain things that I myself wanted to bring to the table. I myself wanted to learn. And she has. And you know, learning, I feel like that's for our whole life. But it's evolving. It's really evolving. Maybe it's the emperor who is feeling... You know, I kind of feel like both of them are feeling something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Um, and I'm also getting a message where some of you may have gone to school for something. Um, though, as I say school, it can be the school of life. It doesn't have to mean college. And you are, like, it's what you do for a living now. So, again, for some of you, and I feel this often, because I do feel like we're one big soul tribe. So, that's why I feel like a lot of readings will resonate, or a reading will resonate with a lot of people. But, let's say, let's say I already have a business, or I'm already doing pretty well, but, you know, I'm interested in adding in new avenues you know, expanding. This is also the perfect time for that. I mean, you have so much love on the board, but you have so much abundance on the board also. But yeah, I could definitely see like younger energy, current energy. To me, the page would be back in the day type energy. The queen would be current right now. Right now, right here. We have the five of pentacles over the knight of pentacles, and then we have the star. Your major arcana, number one. And I always love it when your major arcana shows up in a reading. You know, I feel like if there's any doubt, this should help erase it. Um, this is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. This is about manifesting. I and mean, with the magician here twice, the the ability to manifest fe feels like twofold, tenfold. The five of pentacles coming over the knight of pentacles. Where the knight of pentacles tells you, I come at the right time. You can't make me come before. And I don't come after. And I feel like now we know what the night is waiting for. This change. But as soon as this change happens, then it's the right time. Right time for what? Right time for some wishes to come true. Like, I feel like anytime you see 11, 11 on a clock, make a wish. Wish for your abundance. Wish for your love. You know, put that energy out into the atmosphere and then just let it go. But watch it come back. And it comes back all in divine timing. You know, the only stipulation I feel is with the Knight of Pentacles saying that this probably has to happen first. So this change needs to happen for the rest of this to come about. Not only is the star about your, your wishes coming true, but then you have the three of pentacles right below it, which is a reason to celebrate. It is the energy of joy. And it is mirrored by the lovers. You know, the person in the star card is completely naked. And to me, that means I'm being my authentic self. 
You know, I'm not wearing any false mask. And maybe this has taken time to reach that type of energy where you know you're worth it. You know what I mean? Like you're you're worthy of of this abundance and this love. And you're being exactly who you are. Because I feel like if you got to pretend you're someone else, you know, or like I got to pretend I'm happy all the time or whatever, whatever it would be, then you're not being your true authentic self. And I feel like that's really what it's asking for. Well, I don't even feel like it's asking for it. I feel like you're already there. And also, I feel like as it relates to love, because again, it's coming over the lovers. Um, nobody here needs to wear a mask. Both people are, are, appreciate each other for exactly who they are. Look at this, the Eight of Swords again. Maybe both are carrying that energy. Interesting that the Eight of Swords is coming over the Hangman. But also that Five of Pentacles, which is about change. Not easy change. You know, the Five of Pentacles temporarily, to me, is difficult energy. But we need to look below it, which is the Eight of Cups. That means there's something within the emotional house that is causing these boundaries, because these are boundaries, I feel like, or blocks. You know, it is up to you. You don't always have to say yes to something. Um, but I feel like don't let fear stop you. Like, don't say no because you're just a little fearful. Take a step into it. It could be both the emperor and the empress breaking themselves free from something or someone. We have the seven of wands defending oneself, defending one's actions. And then we have the queen of swords. Interesting with the queen, two queens mirroring each other. Queen of swords um, can certainly be you. Aquarius, Gemini, we have Gemini on the board. Um, Libra, we don't have Libra on the board, um, but that doesn't rule them out. Uh, but the Queen of Swords is to me is someone who, you know, she's got these beautiful white doves around her. So she feels very spiritual and she's connected to divine timing, but also to the world. I just get a feeling that someone may have a hard time breaking something off because of you know, the energy it's going to cause. But don't I have a right to live the life that I've dreamt for myself? The answer is yes. I get a feeling some of you may have already met this person because I feel like this may be exactly why someone's breaking something off with another. And it may not be easy. Do you know what I mean? It may cause some drama. And, you know, if I'm the empress, and it's the emperor who is the one who needs to, let's just say, if he wants to be with me, um clear this energy you know that could be one of the things like I already know there's going to be fighting and drama just don't allow it stand your ground even stand your ground when it comes to let's say love's coming towards you um, but someone's not free and clear like I feel like that's a must it's a must for me Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going.
You know, one queen may be someone that I'm in a relationship with, and the other queen may be someone who lives in, you know, who's in my heart. We have the Nine of Pentacles again. Over temperance. Wow. The synchronicities, first of all. Okay. You know, to me, the Nine of Pentacles stands for... Um, independence. To me, it's a singular type energy. You know, let me put it this way. I'm the one who benefits from the work that I put in within the Nine of Pentacles. I am the sole benefactor. But because I also feel like there is someone who needs to end one thing to then move into the next thing, this feels like becoming single. You know, it's like that's what the Knight of Pentacles is also saying. Like this change, it really does have to happen. You know, this must be one hell of a type of love. Because I feel like your spirit guides, they want this person to show up correctly. Money could have held someone back, you know, like, let's say I was married to this person and um, to leave means that I may lose half my money. That could be the case, but you, you're, you would get that money back. I already know that because I feel like, I feel like you have the ability. So whatever I lose, I feel like you'll gain it back. In a different way, but probably a better way. But I, I really feel it's more about someone now being independent, being single. It's kind of like Tempers is like, well, that's what I've been waiting for also. Nine of Pentacles, I can stand on my own two feet. And I feel that for both of the Emperor and the Empress, they both can stand in their own two feet. They both can make a very cre um, abundant life for themselves. And then you put them together, it's like, holy cow. We have the Page of Pentacles, my little wrist taker. By the way, two pages. The Empress again, over the Nine of Pentacles. Beautiful. I feel like, boy, Aquarius, this is a time to trust those epiphanies that you're receiving. This is a time where I feel like your money or your career or what you, whatever you do for a living, because remember the Empress creative, it could be a creative avenue, but she's right over that nine of pentacles. So to me, it feels like she's single. Number one. Number two, I don't need anyone to come in and take care of me. I can take care of myself, at least financially. Well, really in all areas. But let's remember that the Empress is all about um, loving and nurturing energy. Creative energy, but also very powerful energy. And her power comes from her previous experiences, the things that she's learned in life. And I could definitely see some of you then wanting to help others to overcome certain things. This Empress is using her intuition. She's mirroring her intuition and it's right beside her. And it's right beside the Nine of Pentacles. Success. However it reaches you, it's success. But it's because of your efforts. It's what you're putting in where you then see the fruits of your labor. We have the Eight of Wands. Okay, well, the Eight of Wands, by the way, three eights, do don't, don't. 888. Could be a couple changes. Um... Something's making me wanting to look up angel number 888, and I think I will, but in a minute. So the Eight of Wands is 
couple different things for me. It's what I think about, I bring about, like the law of attraction. You know, it's what I'm putting out to the universe and then the universe matching, you know, because you got to think about your own vibration when it comes to manifesting, right? You got to believe that you can be successful. You got to believe that this love can come together. And you do want to think about your energy um, and the energy you're putting out into the universe. I could definitely feel the energy of two people thinking about each other. You know, and maybe it's not because I'm even trying to manifest. It's just someone all of a sudden is on my mind. This is also fast moving energy. And meant to be. This is your destiny. Coming in over the eight of cups. So someone's realizing that. You know, you're you're realizing this is your destiny. You feel it. The wheel means that things are moving now. It's mirroring the hangman where there was a pause in the action. But why are things moving now? Well, it's coming over the eight of cups. So someone is moving out of, you know, let's just say emotional turmoil and moving more towards inner harmony. Perfect time to fall in love. Now, to me, when the wheel shows up, that means everything was meant to happen, even the hard stuff, especially the hard things, because Again, the Empress and the Emperor, the, you know, they, they learn the lessons of the difficult experiences. I'm not going to say it's instant, but eventually they break it down. They understand. They even know their own part in it. But I feel like because destiny is mirroring the hangman where... Again, a pause, but now the wheel is spinning. Well, part of it's because of your own intentions and maybe even their intentions. And then this feels like the time of, I feel like, potentially coming together. You know, the lessons of the past have taught me well. And I'm not going to let the lessons of, you know, if I've learned the lessons from the past, and sometimes it is simple. Sometimes it's simply what I no longer want, you know, or what what is no longer working. It's not even that I no longer want it. It's just no longer working. And I've got to make that change. You know, these two Eights of Swords right around Destiny, it can be a little resistance. It's interesting because I feel like they have no reason um, unless they did, haven't cleared, like, past energy. You know, they really have no reason to build up these walls. But that's life. I mean, that, that's real life. All right. There's that five of pentacles again, right over the eight of cups and also connected to the eight of cups there on the bottom of the deck over here. This is why the walls are up. Previous drama. Previous fighting. I get it. There's no way I want to go back to that type. Like, if this is love, well, it is love. Um, and it really feels like the highest form of love. But I may not know that until I step into it. And I do find it kind of interesting with the emperor and the empress opening up your reading, being mirrored by divine timing, that either one of them would have up these walls. You know, but on the other side of that, I could see where someone's saying, you know, I've created a lot of goodness in my life. I've been concentrating on my pentacles. 
And I don't know if I really want love yet. I know one thing. I don't want to be part of anyone else's drama. All right. Well, hello, fool. A new beginning. And you know how interesting that I up here was talking about fool with the magician and the magician teaching the fool, you know, because the, the magician is the fool's first mentor along this new journey. This is about a new beginning. And the, the fool, I love the fool's energy because this is someone who is not going to allow their past to affect their present moment energy. You know, the blessings that are meant for them. The fool does take a leap of faith. Or is asking you to take a leap of faith. But listen, it's also connected to the world. It is mirroring the moon. So uncertainties could certainly be part of it. Like, how do I know? How do I know? Your intuition. Trust your intuition. Hmm. Seven of Swords. And then look at this, the Six of Swords. You know, sometimes I find it interesting, and, you know, I've done it myself, where we stay in a relationship sometimes when we know that the person we're with is not trustworthy. You know, um, tells us lies, tells us what we think we, they tell us what we think we want to hear instead of the truth. It comes from a lack mentality. It's not good energy. It's lower vibrational energy. And, you know, if I was with someone like this, and maybe I even tried to fix them, but realized that it's not my job to fix them. You know, I don't know why I keep feeling like it's the emperor who has to deal with all this energy in it. Because I feel like the Empress is already free. But look what follows the Seven of Swords. The Six of Swords. Perfect. Perfect. Because in the Six of Swords, this is someone moving away from this untrustworthy energy. This is someone who is ending. Well, I feel like that's what the Knight of Pentacles has been asking all along. But I also feel like, you know, the reality of the situation is whoever, again, I'm going to use the emperor because that's what I'm feeling. Um, you know, again, I, I do feel like someone could be in a potential relationship, but I don't feel like there's any love. Matter of fact, I feel the opposite. I feel like there's fighting, there's drama, potential cheating, lying. Um, but this is, I feel like the emperor then leaving that energy, letting it go. You know, when you see the six of swords, you got to go back one card and understand what it is that you're leaving. And that's the toxicity. Well, I see the toxicity. And I get it where it could be a little fearful then to like give your heart to someone when, especially if this happens like um, soon after, let's say the emperor left, you know, leaves a relationship. Um, you know, as I say that though, I feel like, I feel like the emperor loves you. And it may be you that's saying, if you want to be with me, then you need to be free and clear. You know, I feel like the Empress has no interest in being with anyone in a love situation that she needs to fix. You know what I mean? It's not that she's not willing to, but what she's learned is there's certain people you just cannot fix. You know, it seems to be a little bit of a narcissistic type energy here. And that may be why the hangman is like, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to be here. 
but I also know by leaving the drama it's going to cause. Well, that will probably be temporary because it's coming over, the, the Eight of Swords is coming over the Five of Pentacles, and that really does talk about temporary energy. Temporarily, it can be difficult. And I feel like the best thing I can do here is if I'm leaving a relationship or the emperor's leaving a relationship and the person I'm leaving wants to cause drama, just don't allow yourself to get pulled into it. Six of swords heading right towards the full. Allowing oneself to have a new beginning. Six of Swords is mirroring another six, which is the lovers. But it's also mirroring your major arcana. What is it you want in your life? What do you need to do to get to that, that energy? How can you truly make your dreams come true? And, you know, as I say that, again, I want to remind you, with temperance here twice, I don't even feel like it. Like I have to be searching or looking for love. Um, but let's say, again, someone comes in towards me. Um, I feel like it'd be hard not to fall in love. I do feel like they're meant to be together. But I also feel the energy of the empress, you know, there's no way she's, she is going to like, like, you know, she won't stay with someone who is still connected to another temporarily. But as long as this person's like going to make that change, which it, it totally looks like they're going to. All right. Um... See if there's anything I want to look out, look at. We'll definitely bring out the romance angels because hello, love. See if there's anything else I want to look at first. I do want you to also recognize that your major arcana, which again speaks about manifesting, you know, your dreams, your wishes, it is connected to divine timing. I feel like these two people are meant to be together. And I feel like it would really take a lot to stop it from coming about. But maybe one is not quite in that place yet. But they want to be. Like, I definitely feel... That someone may be with someone that, you know, and I don't mean this in a like, oh, I'm just going to leave this person so I can be with you. I feel like before you even come into the picture. Now, it can be either way. Um, but I feel like, you know, before one comes into the picture, I already understand. I already know, you know, how could you not that, you know, if I'm with someone that, you know, it's not good. Now, if it is good, then it can talk about the healing of that relationship. But right now, it feels more of like, you know, mm, I kind of feel like someone got stuck with a narcissist. And that's why making the change, right, and the change is leaving, is not as easy as it seems, you know what I mean? Because I know it's going to cause drama. I know there will be fighting. But it's the same breath, I feel like. But I know it'll be worth it in the long run. If the Empress is saying to the Emperor, I'm not going to be with someone who's in a relationship, the Emperor is listening. The emperor is listening and understands that. And by the way, again, if one of the reasons may be because, you know, I'm worried about losing half the money, you know, to like the hard work I've put in throughout my life, the full mirroring the nine of pentacles. 
I feel like you don't have to worry about that. Or they don't have to worry about that. But I feel like being independent is probably one of the most important energies here. Okay, I'm not even sure. There's really, well, let's look at the Eight of Swords. So, I kind of already get it. So, instead of just looking at the Eight of Swords, let's just take a couple cards right across the middle. And then we'll bring out the Romance Angels. Just for anything that I may be missing. We have the Four of Pentacles. Stability. You know, interesting for some of you, I'm picking up like a hometown. Like, could be someone from your hometown. The Magician again. The Eight of Cups again. Justice. And then the Queen of Wands. Justice is cutting those ties. You know, when justice shows up in a reading, it talks about something that's unbalanced. Well, it's sitting next to the Eight of Cups, so my emotions are unbalanced. You know, but someone's causing that. Or, you know, I don't want to put it all on someone else. You know, just, let's just say the relationship, the pre, you know, that someone may be in is unbalanced. And, Yes, they have to cut ties. They don't have to. But again, to be with you, I feel like they would have to. Um, but justice is really about making one whole again. You know, what's fair and just in your world, in their world. And I feel like no matter what happens after I cut the ties, even if there's still a little drama it really is about the balance. You know, it's like when I cut, well, the tox the toxicity out. Then immediately I feel balanced. Doesn't mean all the issues went away. You know, maybe this is someone who, again, cut ties with a previous relationship and right away just feels better. You know, they feel whole again. And I know that it means cutting ties because right before it is the Eight of Cups. So I'm looking for inner harmony. Queen of Wands. She is my queen of action. She's my queen of passion, desire. She's someone who moves according to her desires, her passions. She really doesn't let anything or anyone come in between it. Um, she's a risk taker, just like the page. You know, she's someone who understands not all things are going to work out. That's just life. But all things will teach me something. All things will help me make my life better. You know, even the lessons. And I'm just noticing the flame. There's that flame. I feel like it's a flame between the emperor and the empress. I mean, I don't know how to read this any other way than, than you know, if there's toxicity, if there's fighting, if there's drama, it's, you know, I don't feel like it's about trying to fix it because maybe, again, we have the Seven of Swords. It's not worth fixing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's gone so wrong that maybe there is no fixing it. Hmm. 
interesting that the magician is coming now right over the empress. Do I feel like the emperor wants to manifest the empress into his life? I do. I do. Or we can even put it a different way. Do I feel like the emperor wants someone who is more like-minded? Maybe someone who's more stable, who has their own shit together? I do. Um, but I feel like the empress wants the same thing. Or let me put it a different way. If I allow love into, love into my life, well then, and it's not that, again, someone has to be perfect because you'll never find that. But they may just be perfect for you. Again, this queen is lighting the flame after justice. Um, by the way, Justice is also a card of Libra. And the Queen of, of Wands could be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But you already know what I'm going to say. It certainly does not have to be. I feel like it's talking more about almost, uh, you know, what I feel like. It's the Empress, like, lighting the torch to this flame. But it's because the Emperor did his part. There's no way the emperor would even try to be with the empress with lower vibrational energy. But he is not lower vibrational energy. He is someone that we can normally look up to. And the same with the empress. So, cutting of those ties, that feels like the answer, whatever it may be. Whatever is unbalanced, let's just put it that way. Now, there are two Eight of Swords. And I would have to say that usually the Emperor and the Empress, I don't feel like they carry that energy. But I feel like it's more about freeing oneself. Doesn't mean it's easy. And it shouldn't be. You know, I feel like if it was just easy just to, like, drop someone and not even consider how they're going to feel, then maybe I'm not in the Empress or the Empress's energy. It doesn't mean that you should stay. That's not what I'm saying. But I feel there's a sense of compassion, even though there's also a lot of aggression around us. But I feel like on a soul level... I don't enjoy hurting another. But I also want to have a good life. I also want to have good love. I want to be who I am and not have to make excuses for it. I can tell you the emperor and the empress, neither one of them would put up with cheating, lying type energy. And I don't feel like it's their energy. I feel like it's outside of them. So one of them is dealing with, with someone. But we have to let them, you know, that's something they have to deal with. All right. Let's bring in, look at this, the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. Like, you know, the Knight of Pentacles is patience. That's its first message, but it's about right timing. You know, like you can't make me come in before the right time. And again, you know, interesting because it's like both guard, both of both guardian angels of the emperor and the empress are here. And they're both waiting for, I feel like a human action. But once the human takes the action, then it's my time to come in. I feel like you're both just being guided to each other. All right. And I don't want you to forget what's up here. 
this Ace of Pentacles. Well, we have the Knight of Pentacles twice. And that's just exactly what the Knight brings in, this Ace of Pentacles. It's meant to enhance your life. Where does this Ace go? To the Ten of Cups. The House of Love. The House of Harmony. You have so much love on the board. But yes, you also have human problems. You know what I mean? And it doesn't, even, it doesn't mean it's your problems. It could be someone else's. And you don't want to make their problems your problems. And I feel like that's what the Empress is saying. Like, you know, deal with your issues. And then let's talk. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised for a few of you, or maybe more than a few, if someone from the past um, either reaches out or you run across each other somehow. Now, it doesn't have to be in physical form. could be like online. And maybe a line of communication opens up. And maybe that's what makes this emperor ultimately realize, like, if I want to have the empress, which I do in my life because I love her, then I have to take these human actions to bring it about. You know, whether it's this lifetime or last lifetime, when you see temperance, who really is talking about soulmate energy. And soulmates, you know, you know each other uh, for eternity. You have known each other for eternity. You're soul connected. And you do reckon, you know, when you, when you, um, you know, it's like when you're, what do I want to say? There is a sense within a soulmate that you rare, rarely find with others. You know, it's like comfort. It's a knowing. It's a knowing without really knowing. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, I just feel like I've known you my whole life. Some of you have known this person your whole life, though I do feel like there's been a lot of time in between. But, you know, I don't know. I just feel like, oh, like Mother Mary said, open your heart. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. And that's kind of what I was feeling. All right. I must have already cut them. All right. I'm just going to go right across the board. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. Wow. You know, when I see marriage, my mind goes to commitment. Now, do I think the emperor and the empress, let's say all these issues are taken care of and um, they're free to love each other? Do I feel like the chances are it'll go to a marriage? I do. I feel it will go to the highest form of commitment. It doesn't have to mean that I'm, I want to marry someone because not everyone you know, feels like I need that piece of paper to know that you love me or so forth. Especially you've already been married, you know, and maybe you've already had your children. Um, though I'm not going to leave that off the table, you know, like, why would I leave that off the table? This situation involves marriage. I guess what I'm really trying to say is the type of commitment it is. Trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. That's what temperance is calling for. 
That's what the Knight of Pentacles is calling for, which is somewhere underneath there. Trust. Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Interesting. Why? Oh, thank you. Hmm. True love. This is a romance of a lifetime. Well, I have to tell you, I definitely felt that from the get-go. I find it interesting. Pay attention to the red flags. You know, I feel like this is talking about previous energy because I feel like it's relating back to the Seven of Swords. And I feel like the Seven of Swords, there were red flags. And listen, many of us ignore the red flags. And then we're like, whoa, what the hell? How did I end up here? And your spirit guides be like, well, my darling, we sent the red flags. You know. But it's okay. But now you have to learn the lessons of moving into whatever we sent the red flags about. And then you just let's not forget justice is right below that. And then the cutting of the ties. It's almost like your guides are saying, not almost, but it's like your guides are saying, I feel like probably to the emperor more than anything that whatever relationship or the the last relationship or the current relationship um i feel like his the spirit guides are saying like we tried to warn you you know that maybe you're about to connect with a narcissist let me tell you a narcissist can be so charming right they can pull you in i know i've been with one before and I have to tell you, it took a year before he showed his true self. Now, that may sound scary because now I'm I'm worried that you're going to think that it's going to take a year. Um, but I did have that feeling inside. You know what I mean? Like I had that feeling, but I ignored it. However, I feel like, you know, it's okay. Like, I don't feel like there's any judgment. Like, it's okay. It's okay that you don't always pay attention to our signs. Um, because there could be something valuable you learn anyway. You know, sometimes it's simply what we don't want in love. And it teaches us how to love. You know, if you've had anyone who has cheated on you, I find it would be very hard to then cheat on another. Now, I know that's not everyone, but one of the reasons I feel that is because I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. By the way, when I say I, I mean you. Um, and I only say that because um, someone left a comment where they were confused because I do say I a lot, but that's because I become whoever I'm reading for. This is true love. This is not only true love, but it's a romance of a lifetime. I'm thinking, do I even want to take any more cards? Well, something's telling me just take a couple more. All right. I'd rather leave it on true love, but I shall take a couple more. We have engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Interesting, we have engagement, wedding. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And then codependency. It's coming under the red flags. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Interesting. Hmm.
you know, I'm not really feeling addictions. I'm feeling more of being stuck within a relationship. And even though no one seems to be happy and spirit guides has sent the red flags, but someone ignored them. I feel like, again, it just, just makes it harder to then break yourself free. And I don't know why Aquarius, I keep feeling like it's the other person. So I would say, just ask yourself the question, you know, um, like you, because it can be the other way around. I feel like I, I want to take one more though. Let go of control issues. Let go of control issues. Allow this situation to unfold naturally. Okay. Someone has to break themselves free. There's no doubt about that for me. Like someone needs to break themselves free from, from a lower vibrational love. What was love or thought was going to be love that really turned into quite the headache, quite the problems, quite the fighting. Um, but then I feel like you in some way are reintroduced into their life. And maybe that was the ultimate energy I needed. And I'm speaking as the emperor right now. Like, you know, like, I, I feel like social media, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I was born in 1960 and we didn't have the internet. And if you wanted to meet someone, chances are it was someone in your neighborhood. But this day and age, but, and I do want to say, I do feel for some of you, this can be someone from like a hometown, someone you went to school with, um, but yet, I feel like they found themselves or you in quite a terrible situation. But I do feel like because we have the Six of Swords, which is leaving and then moving into this energy, allowing the situation to unfold naturally, letting this situation unfold naturally is coming right under true love. And not only that, but new love. Yes, this can be someone that you, again, I definitely feel soulmate energy. There's no doubt in my mind. There is no doubt in my mind that this is soulmate energy. Um, but, some of you already know who this person is. And some of you, this is someone who's brand new. But again, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel, you're just going to feel it. You're going to feel the difference. Don't forget, your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So long story short, if someone comes into my life who by the way would be very much like me different but like me does that make sense because the emperor and the empress they are different but they're ultimately seeking the same goal then to me i feel like the highest level of commitment is the emperor and the empress I feel like I just want to grab the top. Okay, this could be the one. And interesting, I already know what it says. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Wow.
I feel like the Empress is just making it very clear whether I'm speaking these words or the Empress just just knows, like, you know, first of all, I don't, I don't want to bring my problems to you. I want to settle my problems. But you may reconnect before that's done. But, and yes, the Empress may wait for a little while if the Emperor is serious about cutting ties. I do feel like he's serious. And if this is new love, so you don't know this person yet, but again, you'll have that familiarity. Like, you'll know each other. You'll feel it. There'll be something different. It feels, I mean, romance is all over the table, number one. True love. Your love is sending to probably levels that you're, you've may not have even experienced yet. So, this could be the one. This is true love. Engagement into wedding. You know, a real commitment. Trust. That's exactly what temperance and the Knight of Pentacles is both asking for. Trust. Trust in divine timing. You know, trust that sometimes divine's waiting sometimes on us, but sometimes on someone else. You know, to take care of their business. But I think what I was going to say in this day and age of social media, um, I could see where, I feel like I've said this a lot this month, but I can see it. Like I'm seeing in my mind's eye where, like, I don't know. Like, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that, like, like let's say Facebook. And when you go to someone's Facebook on the front page, I don't know if that's what you call it, but the front page, some people will put, like, I'm in a relationship on that. So as soon as you go onto their page, you see it right away. Some people put it behind that. You know what I mean? Like, like you have to hit more info. And there you can see whether someone's in a relationship, single, or what have you. I feel like someone is making it clear. And I may have never done this before, where I'm putting single right on my front page. Because I want it to be seen. But I want it to be seen by a particular person. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is when I love your comments because I, I feel like there's, you know, different people at different places in this energy. You know, one is definitely dealing with some hardship, some bullshit. Um, but, you know, they can't blame 100% the other person because they themselves did enter into that relationship. But it doesn't mean it was meant to last. It wasn't meant to last. It's very clear it wasn't meant to last. You know, like Spirit Guides are saying, we sent you the red flags. And we're not judging you because you didn't pay attention to them. But now you do have to go through that lesson. Okay, I get it. I get it. And kind of love that we have two pages also because I do feel like, you know, I know this may sound confusing because I'm saying new love, old love, um, but I feel both. You know, I'm reading for a lot of people, so I know it's going to be different situations for different people. Um, but what I was going to say is that's why I love the comment section because, you know, Someone may still be like in this narcissistic type of energy. And really, 
you know, it's ultimately going to be up to that person. Like, first of all, I don't feel joy or happiness in that at all. But it is going to take me to leave it, to end it, to say no more. And I also feel for some, and it may be you who's making it clear on your front page that you're single. And that may be a sign to another, maybe back from your hometown or from, you know, again, someone you went to school with or college with um, or just lived in the same town. That may be a signal. You may not know that. But that may be a signal to them that, oh, she's single. And I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. That means it's time for me to finally take the action steps that I've been wanting to take forever. I wouldn't be surprised if they even reached out before the fact. But again, the Empress would say, you know, First of all, she'd be like, hi, how are you? You know, it's not that she would like turn them away, but she would make it very clear. Like if they started to get a little romantic, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not that I don't love you, but I really don't want to be part of the trauma that's surrounding you right now. So do me a favor. If you want to be with me, and only if you want to be with me, clean up your life. Clean up your life. And I'm not the type of person who's just going to sit here and wait. You know, I'm not. Because I understand that if you truly love me, like you're saying, then you would want to be free. So I don't feel like there's that. I don't even feel like the Empress would have to say that, to be honest, because I feel like the Emperor already knows that. Like on a soul level, I already know that. I already know that. All right. I know I keep saying I'm going to let it be, and then I get back. I'm telling you, the readings have been long this month. But I'm giving them the time that they need, truly. Um, But anyways, I feel like in the comment section, this is where you help me. You help give me clarity. Um, But I also feel like you help others. I feel like the comment section can be a very healing place if we allow it to be. Um, And a lot of you already share and help each other. And I just love that. And I thank you for that. You know, if you, you know, if you've evolved and, you know, you've been through some of this and then you put that in the comment section and someone may still be like a little stuck, you never know. You might help set them free. You know, that healing energy. And I do feel like we're one big soul family, you know, and I feel like more of us are coming together, like more soul, more of our soul family is still finding us. So I thank you for your comments, but you also help give me clarity. Um, Though I feel pretty clear about the reading, um, but I love your comments. Um, I also want to thank you for your donations. It truly is what keeps me on YouTube. I'm telling you, without donations, I could not stay on YouTube. Um, and I'm I'm even looking for other platforms. I mean, I, I do have Facebook. I have Twitter. I have Instagram. Um, but I, I concentrate on YouTube more than anything. I mean, I share my videos on any other platforms. But YouTube is my main platform. Um So I thank you so much. I'm so grateful for any donation. Um, It's okay if you can't. Like, you know, like if you can't, don't even worry about it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't still accept a reading. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, I thank you for sharing the video on your social network platforms. You know, you only help me grow and um, 
I don't know. I just have so much gratitude for each and every one of you. Truly. Like you are my soul family. And I love each and every one of you. So I think I'll let it be. Put it out into the universe. And then let it come back to you. I love you guys. Thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. What a reading, Aquarius. What a reading. I love you. Bye-bye.